Hello everyone, Shane here. In this part two tutorial on InDesign Grids, I'll walk you through styling text using paragraph styles. And this is a follow-up from the InDesign Grids number one video. We pick up where we left off, having set up a basic three column grid. We are now working with text and image. Let's start working with this. So click on Pages, go down here to say Page 4 and 5, and we'll just start doing a quick mock-up. So I'm in Page 4 and 5. Hit T for Type. I'm going to create a text box or text frame. I'll click and drag it down here in the first column, and I'll go up to Type, and I'll fill with placeholder text. Now I'm going to hit uh, my Move tool, and I'm going to click on the text frame, but hold down Option and Shift, and that's actually copying the text frame. So I'll copy that text frame over to here, and I'll do another one next to that. And then what I'd like to do is thread them. So if I click in the first text frame, you'll notice down the bottom there's a little square, excuse me, in the bottom right-hand corner. That is, I'm not sure the name of it, I think it's called the Outport. If you click inside the Outport, you'll get this little icon which is a loaded gun, a loaded text gun. And if you bring that loaded text gun across to the next text frame, you'll see it changes to a chain icon. And as soon as you, you've got that chain icon, you click. That's basically threaded those two text frames together. Now to see that, you can go up to View and come down to Extras, Show Text Threads. And this blue line tells us that this thread, uh, this text frame is Thread it to this one, and let's do it again. Click again inside here, click in the port, go up to the next one, and you click anywhere inside that, and you can see there's another text frame, right? So no matter where I move that, or any of these, they're threaded together. I could even put them in reverse order, and they're still going to be threaded. Just undo that. So now we've got some nice text frames threaded together. Let's style them. So hitting or double clicking inside one, places my cursor inside, then hit Command A for select all. I've selected all the text in that threaded text frame. Now we'll come up here. In fact, I'll use the uh, character panel. So I'll just break that off and bring it over. So I'm going to use uh, Open Sans as a family here, and I'm going to use regular for the body text. And I'll start that at, say, nine points. And I'll bring this up to 11. One, two, three. Now I'm going to bring it down to 8 points. Okay, that looks pretty good. If I escape, I can hit escape, or I could come up and hit the move tool itself. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just toggle between preview. Yeah, so look, that looks pretty good. I need to add some paragraph um, markers somehow, but the text size for body text seems reasonable. So W, toggle back on. I'll just go back inside there and I'll add some paragraph line breaks. So if I double click, uh, if I click inside my paragraph function at the top, or I could easily come across here and grab my paragraph toolbox. Uh, and now I go down here to space after and I click a couple of millimeters or I perhaps could do it as, say, 5.5 pt for point, which is effectively half a line space, according to what I've set as my leading. Then uh, that's looking pretty good. I might just, just for the sake of interest, add a, another you know, paragraph there. Oops. Just so it looks a bit more... I don't know, consistent. And I might just grab this one, copy it, and just come up here just to extend my text a bit so it's a bit more substantial. Okay, looking pretty good. So now what I want to do is I'm going to set that. Now that I've styled it and I'm pretty happy, I'm going to select it all. I'm going to come over to Paragraph Styles. And once opened, I can then hold down Option and click on the new paragraph style and it immediately opens this new paragraph style dialog box. Now I'm going to type in body text. And what that's doing is, if so long as this is 
clicked on apply to selection is it's selecting or applying the selection that I've set to a new body text uh, sorry paragraph style called body text and um, that's it as you can see if we go inside basic character format you can see open sans regular 8 point on ah 12 point letting I thought I'd set 11 point letting early but I'd actually set 12 so I'm just checking now after looking at it again I think 12 point letting is a bit too much what I can do to adjust it, now that it's set up as a paragraph style, I can double click on the body text, paragraph style, come back to basic character formats, and simply knock it back down. And you can see it's adjusting in a live manner, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to have a look at um, perhaps setting... Oh, well, let's put a picture in now. Come across here to the toolbar, grab your rectangular picture frame, tool tool and click and drag. I'm going to do it like I did in the other one but I'll make it a square. So I'm holding down shift and that's giving me a square frame and it doesn't appear to be locking to guides. I know it is. Come up to place, file, place. Please only use the place command when inserting images into an InDesign file. because you need to establish a link to a master file not to paste the master file in. If you, if we paste, cut and paste the InDesign file, if there's a lot of photographs, we'll get very, very large and very unwieldy and it will be slow to use. So InDesign works on linking images, not pasting images. And that's what this little icon here means, this chain. We go up to links. Open up links over here, pop it over there. So links shows you that that image there is linked, and um, you know it's not here. It's it's sitting on my desktop, <laughs> and there's a low resolution um, placeholder image pasted into this file or created by InDesign in this file. So that looks good. Now, of course, we can resize that. Um, we could reposition that. Um, but that actually looks quite good. By the way, the way if you click and hold the um, the little roundy bits in the middle of an image frame, that that sort of brings a semi-transparent image of the entire photograph, and it allows you to kind of move the object or the frame a little bit, the photograph a little bit more easily. So you can crop it more precisely. Let's go with something like that. Done. So, save, Command S. I'll save that to the uh, desktop. So Command S. Okay, and hit the top W to toggle. And there we go, looking good. So now we're going to add a heading and a subheading and some page numbers. So, W1 again. Hit T for type. Click and drag a text frame. Type in something. Headings are groovy and cool. That's really dating me, isn't it? What about headings are informative and terrific? So, now I've got a quick way of selecting um, text, which is to hold down shift and hit the up bar, which will select that line above it. Um, you don't have to do that, of course. You can always sit, hit Command A. There's also another shortcut to enlarge text, which is to hold down the shift, command, and hit the right triangle bracket key. Anyway, there it is. So if we go up to type character, uh, let's set that at 20 point. That looks good. Click on the move tool here, and I'll just expand the text frame so it's nice and clean. And in fact, I'm going to make this semi-bold. And I'm going to make this a tint of black, 80%. And now that I've got all that set, I'm going to create that as a paragraph style. So come back down to paragraph styles. Once inside, hold down option, click on create new, and call that um, heading. And there we go. 
So now we've got two paragraph styles. Let's make another one. Let's make a subheading. Type tool, place the cursor in here. Headings are uh, subheaders, headings, clarify context. That'll do. And now that I've typed it, I'm just going to select it and I'm going to style it, make it extra bold. And that's it. And I'm going to come back out to paragraph styles, hold down option, click on new paragraph style, call this sub heading, and then that's done. Apply to selection is turned on, so we're good. And this is going well. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste another one over here. And another one over here. Or perhaps up here. I'll just insert a new fake um, section. Now that's not looking as good as it could. Let's add another line space there. And we'll just let that do what it's doing. Looking good. Okay, now one more thing which I'd like to um, suggest to you is there's a little tool called Balance Ragged Line. So if we go inside Paragraph Styles for Body Text and double click on it, go down to Indents and Spacing, and there's this little check here which is called Balanced Balance Ragged Lines. And see, as I'm clicking on it, just notice that it's adjusting every text frame. Or more precisely, it's adjusting the ragged edge, the, um, the right-hand edge of each text frame. And it's attempting to balance those, make them a little bit more even or neat. So I'm going to leave that on. And that's now embedded into my body text paragraph style. So that's going to naturally, not naturally, automatically be done as it, every time I add some more body text, which is very cool. Okay, so the only other thing we haven't done in from our mock-up here is add some page numbers. So let's add some page numbers. So very easy, pages, double click inside master pages. And all you do to set up a page number is T for type. Let's zoom in as well down here. I'll place my page numbers down here. I'm going to click and drag a little type frame, lock it into the guides here. And then all you need to do is go up to type, Insert special character, markers, current page number. And that's going to insert a special character called a page number. And now I simply style it. So hold down shift and hit the left arrow key, selects it. Come up here to open sans. I'm going to make this um, bold. I'm going to make it a color. And I'll leave it at eight point, I think. Now, if notice here how the text frame is larger than it needs to be and if I want the A to sit here I could just click and drag it down but that's a little bit imprecise right it's hard to get it precise so what you can do in InDesign if you double click in the right hand corner bottom right hand corner of a text frame it'll bring the baseline up to the lowest baseline in that text frame and that allows you when you, you know, if you've got Smart Guides turned on, to view Grids and Guides, uh, Smart Guides turned on, it's going to really help you align things really precisely. And now that we've got that one there, let's copy it. Command C. I'm going to go across to the other side. And I'm just going to paste it. Command V. And I'm going to move it into the corner. Now notice it's the text frame is in the corner but not the letter so all you do then go to paragraph and hit right align and it pops across to the right pretty neat so that's that and now you'll see let's add before we do that let's just add running footer so t again for type click and drag a text frame out let's call it shane's no no that's too let's just keep this impersonal um, basic column grid number one. Hit escape. That allows you to sort of get the cursor out of the text frame. Very important if you want to mess around with other shortcuts. I've expanded the text frame to fit it. 
I'm going to select it all and style it. I'm going to style this in, um, let's make this six point uh, semi-bold. There we go. But I'll, I'll, I'll put this in a tint as well. I'll put this in, say, 50%. So it's nice and soft. There we go. Now again, select the frame, double click in the right. It compresses the text frame to its required size and I can click and drag that down. It snaps into place. And if I want to make, let's say, you know, a date or something here. So let's call this um, January 2018, something like that. Select all and right align it so it's tucked nicely in the corner. Hit save, command S, and now I'll just come out back to my page number, sorry, my um, page document itself. And you can see down the bottom here, if I hit W to preview, we've got my little soft grey um, folio. Looking nice. And over here, we've got my little page numbers in magenta. Got my lovely, you know, smooth edged body text um, situation and everything else is looking pretty good. Perhaps this space is a little bit tight now that I look at it so I might just come in here and adjust that. So I'm just going to actually shunt this back a little bit because I'm finding that space a little bit uncomfortable. So what I've just done, lo and behold, is I've broken from my grid. <laughs> if I turn on my grid now you'll see that that vertical line, which is typically used to put images and, and text frames against it. But in this instance, it felt a little bit tight. So that is a good demonstration, I think, of the point of grids. Is you use them, you start, you set them up, and then if you need to, you break them. You don't just blindly follow them. You're the designer. It's your choice.